If you're looking for a design software which is free and easy to use, Canva might be the answer for you. In fact, it allows anyone who isn't a professional designer or who is to create any type of design projects in a very fast and efficient way. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Canva in under 10 minutes. And by the way, this is part of an entire Canva course that I'm creating. So by the time that you're watching this video, it might or might not be released. So feel free to check it out in the link in the description. But now without further ado, let's jump right in this free training. Creating a free Canva account is simple and fast. Simply go on canva.com and uh, you're going to see on the very top right hand corner this sign up button. Simply click on it and you'll see that you have three options. The first one is to sign up with Google, second one is sign up with Facebook and third one is sign up with your email address. Now if you already have an account, simply click on the login button and you're going to be redirected to the login page. And when it comes to your sign up options, simply select the one which you prefer. All of them are going to yield the same result. So once you're logged in, you're going to be redirected to the main dashboard, which we're going to explore in the next video. Once you're signed up, you're going to be redirected to the main screen in Canva. So you're going to see this section right here, which uh, is essentially going to tell you where you are in the design categories. By default, you're going to be in the For You section and you're going to be some suggestions based on the type of design projects which you recently selected. If you scroll down, you're also going to be able to see your recent designs so that you can quickly access them. In order to add a new project and start viewing the different templates, simply select one of these quick suggestions right here. So for example, if I want to see some presentations, you can easily click on that and then select one of the type of presentations that you're going to be able to see all the different templates. You can also click on more in order to find even more templates or simply write in for example, curriculum, and uh, I'm going to see a suggested, and uh, this is going to be the resume. So let's click on it. And as you can see, you're going to be able to view all sorts of different uh, resume templates, which uh, are very easily accessible. You can uh, simply select one. So let's use uh, this one as an example. And uh, as you click on it, you can see that we're going to be redirected in the main Canva editor, which we're going to explore in much detail in this course. Now, on top of that, you can also see some suggestions here under the templates. So if you want, for example, professional resumes, you can click here on see all and you're going to be able to see all sorts of different resumes. And in order to switch between this one and uh, another one, you can simply click on it. And as you can see, it's uh, very easy, it's very fast, uh, and uh, you can literally just uh, uh, use these templates uh, in a very fast way. You can also drag and drop them on top of the current uh, um, template design. And you can also add a new page. So for example, if you want uh, both uh, of these, uh, you can simply do that in a very fast and efficient way. Now, just before we move on to the next video, I also want to remind you that if we go back to the previous screen, you can also select create a design in order to create a new design. And you're going to have the search feature here as well. So for example, if I want to find something for Pinterest, I can simply click on Pinterest and I'm going to be able to create a new uh, pin directly from here. And as you can see under the template section, I'm still going to have all sorts of different uh, template recommendations, which uh, I can quickly and easily paste in by simply uh, selecting one. So we're going to move on to the next video in order to explore much more about Canva. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, backgrounds. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a document and this can be any document that you prefer. 
For this example, I'm going to use uh, a A4. And uh, in order to access the background of the document, and by the way, I'm using command and plus in order to increase the size of uh, this document. And uh, in order to change the background, simply select uh, the document. And as you can see, you know that it's selected since it has this uh, blue outline. We're going to click uh, on background color. Now you're going to be able to now see this uh, column on the very left and uh, you can uh, either choose between uh, one of these uh, presets in order to add a color real fast or alternatively if you want to create uh, a specific uh, or select a specific color you can simply go over here and uh, choose the color that you prefer from this uh, color wheel of the hues now you can also pick a color from the design. So anywhere, including also the background, uh, and uh, especially if you're going to have uh, any sort of images, you're going to be able to use this color picker to choose pretty much anywhere that you want in the canvas. Now on top of that, uh, you can also use the hexadecimal code if uh, you have a very specific color that you want to use. So for example, if I use the hexa color value of FFF and uh, the not being uh, six times, you are going to see that we're going to select the color white. Now, another way to add colors uh, is, uh, and backgrounds especially, is to use one of the images under the elements panel. So here I'm going to see all sorts of uh, different uh, images. These are some of the most uh, recently used. And I'm going to have also some of uh, uh, the photos suggested based on my search queries. However, most of the times what you're going to do is you're actually going to search for something. So for example, let's write in analytics. And uh, as you can see, I'm going to be able to view here all sorts of uh, different uh, photos, which I can simply drag and drop. Now there is a, this very useful feature that you can drag and drop uh, and if you do it on the top uh, section of the artboard, you're going to be able to see that the entire background of the artboard is going to be covered. And if I double click, I'm going to be able to basically resize. I'm going to use command minus in order to move back. I'm going to be able to resize and move this image anywhere that uh, I want uh, and then I can click on enter. I'm going to have that image as a background. So really useful. And I also want to remind you that uh, over here on the top, you can browse between photos, graphics, videos, and even audio based on the search query that you entered here on the top. So this is pretty much it. As you can see, for the very most part, adding backgrounds is a fast and efficient uh, and simple action inside of Canva. So let's uh, continue in the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about layers and how they work in Canva. So if you previously used uh, a app uh, such as Photoshop, Illustrator, Figma, Adobe XD, or Sketch, uh, you're most likely familiar with the concept of layers. Now, layers are really important because some elements uh, are going to be on top of one another and create a hierarchy. So let's examine this one, for example, creating this rectangle and uh, we're going to change the color to green. And now let's go ahead and let's create a circle. Now we're going to change the color of the circle in order to make this concept really clear. So we're going to give it a value of blue. We're going to make this bigger, center them. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the circle on top of the rectangle. Now, as you can see in the layering system, the circle is on top of the rectangle. But in order to change this, uh, you can click uh, on position after you selected the element. You can see that uh, you can bring it forward by simply clicking on forward. Now, you can imagine that uh, if you have a lot of layers, you're probably going to need to do this action multiple times. So for example, let's create another circle and I used the shortcut option alt key 
and I just use the left mouse button in order to create a duplicate and drag it around. So Option Alt key is going to enable you to do these things. And uh, as you can see, once uh, I have more than three elements, uh, I, or actually more than two elements, I can see also the two back option. Now this option enables me to bring the rectangle all the way to the lower levels of the hierarchy so that uh, I can easily change this very fast. Now, if I only use the backward, you can see that I'm going to use it one step at a time. Now, you can also use these shortcuts, which you can see over here, in order to do the same action in a fast way. Now, one more thing that I want to mention about the layers is that uh, the moment that, uh, for example, we resize this and we bring uh, these uh, circles, and I'm going to change the color just to make it even more clear, you can see that uh, as I select them and uh, I bring uh, this uh, element all the way to the right, I can uh, either group them, so I can create a one single unit out of these layers. I can also ungroup them if I don't want uh, to have them uh, grouped anymore. And I can also change the position and the alignment of these elements. So for example, if I want all of them to be in uh, the middle alignment, considering the X axis, I can simply click on middle and uh, I can also simply select them and use this feature here, which is space evenly horizontally. So that, as you can see, I'm going to have an even spacing between the elements. Now, if we get rid of the rectangle, we can see how these uh, tools also work uh, in uh, uh, vertical modes. So let's, uh, for example, select these and uh, I'm going to use uh, the position again. I'm going to click on center. As you can see, they're centered according to the Y axis. If I space evenly vertically, you can see how I now space them even. So we have the equal amount of spacing. Now, another really useful tool in Figma, and I'm going to use Option Alt key again in order to create just a few of these duplicates is this tidy up feature, which essentially ties them up in an order which is cleaner for us to work with. Now, this is pretty much it. And as you can see, I'm resizing using the shift plus the option key. So option plus shift and simply drag and you can easily resize them according to the center and without changing the proportions. So something which is really useful. This is it for this video and I'll see you in the very next one.